This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. No, adventure is not dead, and in spite of the steam engine and of Thomas Cook and Son. Jack London, The Cruise of the Snark, 1911. There is a universal saying to the effect that it is when men are off in the wilds that they show themselves as they really are. Kermit Roosevelt, The Happy Hunting Grounds, 1921. Global Frontiers Notions like the closing frontier, and with it the passing of the real, authentic, old, wild west, the death of regionalism, the end of real travel, and the loss of uncharted space are all connected. Twentieth-century travel writers, in searching for the last supposed remaining vestiges of authentic old westernness, have in fact helped keep the western frontier alive in the public consciousness thereby fortifying the storehouse of American Western exceptionalism in the face of the forces of first modernization and then globalization. While the tendency among many of the more insightful and engaging 19th century travel writers was to view the American West within a broader and largely de-exceptionalized global context, their 20th century counterparts often, in contrast, looked persistently inward while searching for a distinctively American frontier, a place like nowhere else on earth. The chronological divide between travel writers envisioning of a global West and then subsequently of an American frontier comes somewhere between the end of the 19th century and the start of the 20th, but it is not rigid. Like all such efforts at periodization, it bleeds at the edges. The motivation to search in the American Far West for the final traces of what had been or was being lost is generally more evident in 20th century travel books about the region, just as the tendency toward global contextualization of the West is more characteristic of the travel accounts of the previous century. The completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869 marked for some the end of the old frontier West and the beginning of the new modern West. Moreover, concern over the perceived closing of the American frontier was a well-established strain in American thought by the 1880s. Richard Harding Davis's book of train travel observations, The West from a Car Window, 1892, constituted a search for the remnants of the Old West, yet using the very conveyance that symbolized the end of an earlier era. In the early 20th century, both Jack London and Theodore Roosevelt, in the wake of his presidency, searched for new frontiers of adventure well beyond the geographic borders of their newly frontierless nation. London's and Roosevelt's dramatic global adventures were in no small part manifestations of the urge to find the American frontier, or at least a fitting set of substitutes for the hardships, dangers, and discoveries it had afforded. In a sense, they were looking for the West in the world. Yet at the same time, they were part of a larger landscape of frontier adventuring that brought the North and South Poles, Mount McKinley, and other far-flung peaks, rivers, and even peoples more fully within the purview of the Euro-American world. From Hawaii to Africa As the 20th century unfolded, the much-discussed closing of the frontier and attendant end of rigorous, dangerous, and memorable journeying experience hit such a nerve with London that he boldly declared in his 1911 work, The Cruise of the Snark, that the purported demise of adventure was premature, 